Kick it. So my cameraman had a question in regards to um, starting the car. So if you start the car and it just cranks and cranks and cranks, turn the key and it doesn't want to, it sounds like it's not starting over. It's not even trying to start. Um, that could be an electrical thing like uh, points, ignition, there's no spark. Um, but say it does start and then quickly dies, now you got a carburetor issue. So I was explaining to him, uh, sometimes all it takes is a little speck of dirt uh, through the old fuel line or something or an old speck of rust that can get into the carburetor and get into the jets that can uh, choke up the carb and uh, make it not idle. So I have a video on Express Carb Clean, so definitely check that video out. That's usually a common uh, problem uh, with the car stalling, especially when you come to a red light or something. Um, so, but uh, here is the oval window dash, early dash, very vintage, very cool, um, very collectible to many people. Uh, they changed this dash in 58. Uh, they changed some things up. Speaker moved over here by the speedometer. And uh, again, no gas gauge here. So you run out of gas, you have to turn a lever uh, underneath the dashboard. That's the reserve. And that gives you an extra gallon of gas, about 30 miles or so. But just remember when you run out, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, when you fill up, push this lever back because if you don't, now you're really out of gas. So we want to push this back over. It's at 12 o'clock after you fill up. So but I'm going to get an extension for this client that's going to mount underneath this uh, bamboo uh, parcel shelf that I have here so it's easy access to do that because it could get kind of dangerous on the road. you got to be careful. You know, if you're on a highway or something and you run out of gas, uh, it can be kind of hairy, kind of scary. But generally speaking, I try to just keep, look at my mileage and you know, every 300 miles or so, it's pretty much when you need to fill up. And they used to sell actually from a dealership um, a stick used to stick into the tank to tell you how much gas you have but uh, that's how you uh, that's your gas situation as we come up over here here's your glove box very small glove box now you normally ovals uh, don't have or any any beetle for that matter don't have a pull uh, here so it's kind of difficult when you press this button and the door doesn't want to spring open uh, so we put a little pull on here now and that helps you open that these little rubber snubbers here on either end of the door, which is supposed to help push the door opened. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. These are aftermarket, of course, so they might not have the oomph to push the door open. So I put a little pull on this for the client and uh, make life a lot easier. And then right next to it, of course, is your ashtray. If anybody smokes. <laughs> uh, here is normally a speaker grill but there was a dealer option to put a clock in the dash and this client opted to go for a clock. Uh, just keep in mind then if you do have a radio like you have here, there's a big M Motorola radio was very common back then for the ovals and uh, usually now if you have a clock in this area that's in the way of the speaker. So most people opted for either or. It was not very common to have both. Uh, again these were utilitarian cars, cheap cars so they weren't meant to be so accessorized you know so of course your speedometer is right here again no gas gauge some dealer options did have a gas a, uh, a Dene gas gauge Dene they call it or Dene uh, gas gauge uh, that they would usually have here or over here depending on the dealership and uh, they had a, a hookup uh, for a float in the gas tank so and we could start from here these are your lights of course Pull out one, that's the parking lights. We don't have parking lights in this car. It's just the blinkers down there, but pull it all the way out are your lights. Okay, then we put LEDs in the front headlights of this car. So those are really nice and bright. And the rears are still the same uh, incandescent bulb. Close that. This here is your wiper switch. So that's your, those are your wipers. All right, and then it's usually one speed, there's no two speed on this, and they always park where they are now. They park towards the passenger side, and yes, this is correct. The far most wiper parks just like that. People will ask me all the time when I go to a show, you know, your wiper's up, your wiper arm is up. Nope, that's exactly the way it was supposed to park. So to the right side of the radio, you have the choke here, 
and I like the manual choke of the earlier cars because if the car's cold you can just pull this out right away just like that you don't have to pull out too far I know it can come out like this that's a little too far I don't have to choke ever that much I come out maybe halfway there and the car is cold you can choke the car and pretty much start it if it starts you can get going um, you really don't have to wait for the car to warm up too much even though I do anyway but you know you don't have to wait uh, as opposed to later on when they come out with the electric choke you kind of have to let, let the car warm up a little bit uh, at least in my experience um, but I do like this uh, manual choke so we pull it out just like this and then I pump the pedal a couple times turn the key now you hear the engine sounds a little high because I got the choke out the more you pull it out the higher the engine's gonna rev you hear it and the more you pull it in it starts to go down but it's a good way to get the car started. I like, I love the manual choke. It's a beautiful thing. And then you can just get going. Since this has a banjo steering wheel on it, this is an aftermarket banjo steering wheel. Most aftermarket wheels these days do not have the canceling mechanism built into this to cancel out your blinkers. So if you do the blinkers like I'm gonna do now, say going to the, on the driver's side, your speedo's blinking red, just like that. After you come out of the turn, this is not going to come back to its center detent position. You're going to have to do that manually by hand because there's no canceling mech on the aftermarket steering wheel. The original steering wheel, which would have been like sort of the Batwing wheel, has the canceling mech in it and would cancel the switch. So just keep that in mind. This is for my client pretty much who's going to be getting this car. There's his horn, of course. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Um, I can push the choke in now because... Now the car goes to a nice idle. All right. Now, we've got the shift pattern here on the shift knob. People, you know, I guess compared to new cars today, a lot of shifting today is pushing down to the left and up. For a Beetle, old school Beetle, it's, of course, you've got a clutch. You're going to push down to the left and back. All right. And that's going to be your reverse. That's that. Now normally if you're going to go forward, say you're at a red light, every now and then before I, sometimes you have to do this, but before you come to a complete stop, this is a crash box transmission, so you got to make sure you come to a complete stop before you go into first. It will not go into first if you're still rolling. Alright, so sometimes though, say you're at a red light and you're, trying to, you're in neutral and then you try to go into first and sometimes it gets a little caught, this doesn't happen all the time, it's always good to go back to second and then go back to first and then that kind of resets it. That was a very common thing. Uh, a friend of mine who worked for Volkswagen back in the day said it's very common to, to, to practice actually, to do that on a common stop. Just go back to second, then go back to first, then you can go to first. But just check it out. Sometimes that happens. You might get a little hung up here. Just go back and then back up. Okay, that's it. So, e-brake down, push down to the left and back. mirrors out very small mirror very small window in the back you got your outside mirrors here not the greatest they're very small that's very small too but for the most part they do get the job done but uh, just be cautious so again we're 36 horsepower here it's not the greatest of speeds and uh, you know when you get up on the highway it could get a little hairy but uh, we're gonna go for a run now and drive this baby When you hear the whine like you do right now in the transmission, very common, crash box tranny, they have a whine to them in first gear. Now there's red tick marks on this speedometer and that's where you want to shift. So right about 15 miles an hour is the next shift mark. But I go by ear too, so you don't want it to whine too high. There we go. Now the whining goes away. And pretty much second gear goes to about 25 miles an hour or so. And you shift and to third. You do not have to race shift these cars. It's it's a methodical shift. There's no reason to horse into first and second and third and make it like you're a race car driver. It just doesn't happen. You don't have to do that with a Beetle. And we rebuilt everything on this car, so I mean I can take my hands off the wheel and this car goes straight. It's really nice. Pretty cool. It's 
seat is all the way back. Can't really go much further. Um, I just think people were smaller back in the day compared to what we are now. Uh, so, but if you did want to modify this, you would have to move the seat rails back on the floor pan and break them off and then re-weld them back on. I do get that question from time to time. Here we go. Shift's good. There's no grinding. There's no popping out of gear. Car drives nice and straight. Very cool. Again, I watch my tick marks on my speedometer when I'm going to shift. Going about 40, 45 miles an hour. All right, so we're going to head up on a highway here. I'm going to talk about downshifting for a second. When you're at high RPMs with this car, right now I'm in fourth gear. You want to downshift. You're not going to want to go to second right away. Some people do that. They go from fourth to second. Uh, I would say go to second when you're basically under 20 miles an hour, under 15 miles an hour. Then you can shift to downshift like I just did right there. Uh, some people downshift way high. I wouldn't do that with these, these cars. I mean, a lot of times you're, you're going to hear a grind because it's just racing too high. So but we're going to come up on Palisades Parkway right now. Here's the ramp. And basically... Uh, for safety concerns you want to get a good look and make sure you got some leeway here all right so pretty good i'm hitting it i'm hitting it now just so i can get uh, i got a guy who's coming right on me so definitely want to let him go and then i'm going to hit it now third fourth Going downhill, of course, the car picks up some good speed. I'm at 60 miles an hour. The car is very straight, very tight, straight right on this road. I hit a small bump there, and the car is still going so straight. Really nice. The car feels like a brand new oval bug from 56. And again, no power brakes. So these are drum brakes, not disc brakes. So you got to give yourself a good heads up, a good few cars lengths away. So when you hit the brakes, you got a new good enough distance to come to a stop especially when you're going at high speeds so keep on the lookout for that they do sell disc brake kits for these cars and if it's something you want for safety I I actually do like disc brakes on the, on the Beatles if you do want to go that route and you're gonna drive it every day or something or you, you're definitely gonna get up on the highways or you're gonna put a stronger motor in this car then you go with some disc brakes but this is a bone stock restoration again Sunday driving go out for ice cream, go to a car uh, car show every now and then, and this is perfect. So, so we're driving now, it's 55, no problem. I see a hill coming, so I just hit the gas here about 65 before I hit this hill, and I'm starting to, you see the needle starting to go down as I'm going up this hill. It's very common for these cars. 36 horsepower and you see it'll keep going down if this hill was longer but now that I'm at the top of the hill it's going okay again so I'm back up to speed but there's a longer hill up here that uh, I ran it the other day the car and it, it, it did gradually drop to about 45 miles an hour and then down to 40 and I had a downshift sometimes you don't have to downshift but when you downshift to third it's yeah but the fact that we got the Abarth muffler on this actually makes this a little more, uh, gives the car a little more power actually to breathe and to get up this hill. So here's this hill now that we're heading up to. We're entering into New Jersey, Palisades Parkway. And yeah, the car is starting to go down a bit. But it's not going to overheat, it's not going to bog. This is very normal. guy by my butt right now of course he's looking to get around me another little hill here so I might drop down a little more yeah so there's the red tick mark here that wants you to shift to fourth and I'm just going down from there again very common going up a very long hill here I'm at 40 now and I'm right at the top of the hill. So that was a 
pretty long hill, uh, but once I get to the top of the hill, I don't have to downshift, and the car's ready to go back up now. As you can see, I'm level on level ground, and the car's going back up. So, um, little vent window. I love these little vent windows, especially on the earlier cars. They had vent windows all the way up to the end for Beetle, uh, for a sedan. And uh, it's, a wonderful, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing, but uh, you just press this little button in right here, and that's gonna release the latch here. Pull up and push out. And there's your vent window. And not only is it a vent window, it is your air conditioning. So a lot of people ask me, especially if you live in warmer climates like Texas or Florida or you know New Mexico, Arizona, something like that. Uh, you know they want AC in their car. I I really don't like AC in these little cars, especially with these little motors. So this is your AC, and pretty much you know if it's a really hot day and you want to drive the bug, maybe wait till it cools down, or just get into your uh, your new car that has AC. But um, and then just to close the vent window, sometimes you need a little help from this side. You gotta push it in far enough so you clear the latch and just push that right down and you're operating your vent window. So here we got the ragtop sunroof. This is the oval window ragtop sunroof. This is a 56, so it's a two-fold roof, not a three-fold. 55 and earlier had the three-folds. So if you come back here and you see this is the two-fold roof. They simplified the the mechanism here, it's actually a lot easier to close this roof than the three-fold. Uh, so pretty simple, just come inside. You can literally sit here in the seat. Just put your hand here and just move. And if you wanna look in here where to close. So basically, once I, I use one hand, it slides beautifully back and forth. He said wheels on them back in these years as opposed to sliders that were in the earlier bugs. But once you move it and close it into that uh, slot up there for the hook to go into, you turn the handle. And to reopen it, just turn the handle this way. And again, it slides right back. And that's it. Pretty simple. Easy way to operate that. Shouldn't hang up by any means, so it moves and slides beautifully back and forth. So another thing I want to talk about, which is good to have in a Beetle, is to buy a small fire extinguisher. They're always good to have. Um, I've seen them where they're mounted on the front of the side firewall here, the footwell area here, you can mount them there. If you want to put them in your trunk, you could do that too, just in case. You know, you never know, these are older cars. We are dealing with aftermarket parts these days. Things do fail sometimes. Most Beetles will catch fire um, mostly in the engine compartment, you know, if fuel is dripping from the fuel line, say from the fuel pump to the carb, or the carb itself is, is leaking or uh, gas, usually on the throttle arm, or one of the fuel lines is just not tight or something like that, uh, always try to stick with German lines, the braided line. If you use a generic fuel, a rubber hose line, and you put it, you know, it's called, of course, you gotta put a clamp on it, but the German made line is the better line to use, especially for uh, these cars. Uh, but it's common that with the fuel drip on the distributor, cause a spark and boof, your car could catch fire. So always good to have a fire extinguisher uh, in your car. Um, some cars have uh, caught fire even by the electrical system in the car too. So if you have an old wiring harness in your car, um, we had somebody on our, our last uh, fall foliage cruise uh, last year that uh, their car caught fire or small fire with their electric uh, wiring. So you just got to be careful of that too. And you just don't want stuff to ignite and your pride and joy is, uh, is up in smoke. So um, definitely be on the lookout for that. And also your battery. If you still have the old school horsehair padding on these seats, they can become brittle. I mean, so easy to catch fire. Uh, so, God forbid there's a spark or something, you don't have a good connection on your battery terminals under your back seat, could catch fire. So, I would say for any classic car that's out there, put a fire extinguisher in the car 
and, uh, and be safe with that. Okay, so the final thing I wanna talk about here, and guys, if I missed anything in this video, you wanna chime in on the comment section below, please do that, because uh, sometimes we forget some things, but uh, other thing I wanna to talk to you about is the battery under the back seat. So if you come around here, Jericho. So basically you see where the battery is under the back seat. And these years did not have those kick panels yet that came in on the later Beetles. But you wanna just be able to pick this up just like this. Now usually the seat rests inside this bar down here. But just for the showing you this purpose, uh, make it easier to pop it up here. I got new upholstery on here, so it was kind of tight to pull it out. But there's where your battery sits and it's clamped down with a strap and all. But usually they have the covers that go on these. Um, it's tough to find batteries these days that where those covers work. This is a 12 volt battery and it's the MT26 battery from by Interstate. And from uh, what the guy told me who gave us that 12 volt conversion uh, generator that has a six volt body and the 12 volt guts and he says this is the battery that has to work with that generator. So, and then to put the seat back down, I'll show you real quick here. Uh, I do have a video on this in the past, but to put the seat back down, you gotta make sure you put the nose, this part of the seat, into the rim here first into the uh, the support bar so we got it in there okay you set that up there and then you push down on the seat so let me get in here and I'll push it down make sure you're even straight across and then just start pushing down side to side and it pops right in just like that okay and that's it so let me get out Any questions, email me, Chris, at ClassicVWBugs.com. Uh, comments, leave them below. And, of course, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And, uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Peace.